In the business of truth, there's always a couple of lies. We're taking a quick peek at how to shoot a criminal. How to Shoot a Criminal is an FMV or full motion video adventure detective game thing by Pandorica. I'm not entirely sure how to explain what the game is with conventional video game classifications, but the developers have mentioned that it's mostly inspired by Sam Barlow's Her Story from 2015. If you're familiar with that game, then you've got an idea of what you're in for here. It uses a similar concept of using keywords to search through various files, and you're still tasked with uncovering a crime. But things are a bit more complicated. The crime in question isn't something that's necessarily illegal, and that's the main thing at play here with How to Shoot a Criminal. The story takes place in the early 1930s, where the Great Depression is in full swing in the United States. Crime, poverty, and corruption run rampant throughout the city of New York, but one newspaper decides it's had enough. The Anne Bonnie's Revenge, headed up by one Aaron Williams, is out to set the record straight and bring to light as many injustices as it possibly can. Over time, Aaron and his staff have been able to win the public's trust, but it isn't long before cracks begin to show. Unsatisfied with the direction Air is taking the revenge by using his newfound influence, the staff of seven unique individuals plans to not only discredit their boss, but bring down the monster they've created. Scarlet Eppledore, external relations officer for the revenge, along with her co-worker Amy, begin their search to find just what Aaron's been up to. It's somewhat difficult to talk about how to shoot a criminal without running the risk of spoiling parts of the game since it's a very story-driven game. While any and all information is scattered amongst articles, memories, notes, and interviews throughout the game, it can be difficult to discern what's important and what isn't. Not only to avoid giving away any spoiler information, but also to find the information the game tasks you to find in the first place. Scarlet has four days to find what she's looking for with a limited amount of sources on hand. Only some of what Scarlet has access to is actually relevant, and narrowing down all the information is where the difficulty lies. After all, she doesn't need to know what everyone had for lunch, just needs to know something that will ruin Aaron's reputation. Some kind of oversight to destroy the public's trust and make Aaron somewhat of a criminal by association. Scarlet's determined to find proof that the revenge's original goal of exposing the truth has gone sour and she isn't content on falsifying information. Instead, she sets out on digging through countless files, with nothing more than a search bar to aid in figuring out what's what. Each day has some kind of goal of finding some dirt to use against Aaron, but the game doesn't tell you what you need to find nor which leads to follow. Only specific information will lead you to that goal, with any other information being used for character development and world building. I found very little of it to be helpful as most of the words I picked out of conversations to search led me nowhere. For the most part, I ended up stumbling my way through the game by searching words and phrases almost at random, just to see what would come up. It also doesn't help that the game's native language is French. Pandroika is a French indie developer, and as such, I completely understand that they didn't have the budget to translate everything in the game to English. That said, it's still a bit weird to see characters who are from the United States and in New York City speak nothing but French, though I imagine it's not any weirder than when Hollywood does the same thing for other languages with English. Nous réfléchissons, disons, à la ligne éditoriale du prochain numéro. C'est très difficile pour nous d'avancer sans savoir quelle sorte d'article nous allons publier. C'est-à-dire English. What it does do, however, is make things a bit confusing. Video sequences are framed within what look like news articles, even though their content is more like memories. Since I can't read French, I can't tell what the article says, so I'm honestly not sure if the framing is purely aesthetics, but thankfully there are subtitles for everything that's spoken. While subtitles are never the ideal way to enjoy media, they are better than nothing. 
but the subtitles for How to Shoot a Criminal can make things annoying. Characters tend to speak rather quickly, with video and voice clips being rather short. Due to this, subtitles quickly enter and leave the screen many times before I got the opportunity to finish reading them. While there is a way to pause a video clip, there isn't any way to rewind nor fast forward. If you happen to miss a line, the only thing to do is wait for that clip to be over and watch it again from the... Everything seems to have been translated well, but what doesn't help these live-action videos is the cast's acting. The acting isn't horrible and about on par with some of the ridiculous FMV games of the 90s, but it doesn't do much to help. One of the things her story did was use its acting to help guide the player to specific words through subtext and body language. I didn't really see much of that in How to Shoot a Criminal, which could be a product of the cast's acting abilities, along with having to read subtitles or possibly something being lost in translation. Every document has a group of keywords connected to it. Typing said word into the game's search bar will place up to four documents on your table related to that word. The game is a bit inconsistent when it comes to how it assigns keywords, which creates some frustration. It seems that only specific words that are part of a conversation are counted as keywords, even if multiple documents are related to that game. I found it difficult to tell how the keywords are connected to the different clips. Originally, I thought it had to be with a word that was said in a conversation, and that's true for the most part. But when it comes to a character like Mr. Adams, he has three video clips that are all part of the same conversation, but you'll only find one by searching his name, even though the word Adams is said in multiple video clips. There's a reason why games moved away from using keywords and a text parser. Old text adventure titles like Zork use them as well as early adventure games before they embraced the mouse and evolved into point and clicks. Part of the reason for the evolution was due to the difficulty these games had in making players understand which words were particularly important, or which was the correct way to say something specific. Using keywords isn't impossible, but just very difficult, and How to Shoot a Criminal needed to put a bit more work into how it used them. To help the player keep track of what they've discovered so far, the game gives you access to a little notepad. Emphasis on the little. There is only one small page you can write on. Once you fill that page up, you have to either delete what you've written or break out a real notepad and pen. That's not a real problem since I've had to make my own notes for games in the past, but I do wish that the notepad that was in the game was a lot more but often. Overall, I mostly enjoyed my time with How to Shoot a Criminal. I really liked its story of disgruntled journalists aiming to bring to light the truth of their own paper they helped create. While not every document may be relevant to the overall goal, seeing how the revenge developed over time as well as how the dynamic of its staff changed was enough to keep me invested in the story. The black and white filter given to every video helps it fit the 1930s setting, though it can cause subtitles to blend in sometimes. The game itself isn't bug-free either. Exiting the game and loading your save causes a lot of glitches to happen. The game marks everything you've read, listened to, or watched with a red check mark, but loading the game will sometimes remove check marks from documents you've already viewed. Every check marked document adds to a counter in the bottom right of the screen that shows you how many documents you've viewed out of how many that are available. Viewing a clip that a check mark has been removed from will then add another number onto that counter, causing it to lose count and many times end up being higher than it's supposed to be, which makes it difficult to know exactly where I am when it comes to looking through documents. Loading also messes up some of the game's subtitles, causing them not to show and thus making it impossible to understand what's being said unless the player happens to know French. 
Even though I want to, I can't really recommend how to shoot a criminal unless you're specifically looking for something a bit different. While it's close, it fails to live up to its inspiration of her story while costing a dollar more at $6.99 US on Steam. That's all I got for now. Please let me know what you think about the game or this video in the comment section. I've made a pie, man. I'll talk to you guys later. Want to see more quick peeks? Click on the video on the left to hear about Pre-Dynastic Egypt, a turn-based strategy game about creating the country of Egypt. Or click on the video on the right where I go over some of my favorite and least favorite games of 2016. And of course, if you want to know of any videos that go live in the future, you can always subscribe.